It would kill a man twice after eating a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. And I got some Christmas tunes popping. That song is just genius, man. That is a brilliant line. It would kill a man twice after eating a slice. That's just genius. Anyway, focus, Tom. So I, I picked up this one actually a couple months ago. Uh, but I just popped it for the first time on Thanksgiving Day. And my bird's in the oven. So I thought I'd, uh, this is typically what I do anyway. Uh, Jay Rieger, private stock bourbon. Now, Jay, Jay, the Jay Rieger Kansas City whiskey isn't a true bourbon. That's why it's called a Kansas City whiskey, because it uses uh, Oloroso sherry. But this one is a bourbon. By golly, my eyes don't want to read all that. Uh, Jay Rieger, private stock. I uh, picked it up at Lucas Wine. Uh, it is. It was their, their bottle pick, I suppose. This is a cast strength, 60.7 ABV. Um, 121.4, I suppose. Uh, Jay Rieger Private Stock. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, Keenan Cabernet Barrel Finish Straight Bourbon Whiskey. There you go. So Cabernet Finish. I'm expecting some extra notes there. I haven't had this yet, but I am a fan of their Kansas City whiskey. And, and uh, about a month ago, um, I was lucky enough, uh, McAdoodles uh, Liquor Store here in town, uh, Pick three of their their social media fans, I suppose, uh, to help them pick a bottle uh, of their of, of you know their 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 store bottle. So they allowed us to taste uh, a, a hundred is a hundred proof, a one ten proof, um, a one twenty proof, I believe. Uh, no, it was a ninety. I'm sorry, it was a no, it was a hundred, one ten, one twenty, and and a castrate. So we all picked one out, so hopefully that'll be out shortly. But like I said, I picked up this one a couple months ago when we were in Kansas City, so I am very curious to see what she's got. I did typically, what I, this would probably be a whiskey I drink most to neat. However, anytime I buy something for the first time, I like to do both uh, neat and rocks applications. I'm going to check the nose neat here, then I'm going to set it down and drink the rocks before too much happens to it. It is very rich and decadent on the nose. Uh, big notes of toffee. And I'm going to say more toffee than caramel. Uh, typically, how I differentiate the two is, is coffee. Uh, coffee. Uh, uh, caramel is a little sweeter and creamier, while, while, while toffee is a little more rich, a little more decadent, and may have some nutty undertones. I, I get a, a an abundance of uh, an, abund an abundance. I get a. <laughs> Get an abundance of vanilla. There's a lot of vanilla on the nose. I actually feel like I get a hint of um, anise as well. And there's a lot of fruit notes. But I'm going to set that down. And we'll delve more into that later. Because I don't want too much water to melt into this. But I did want to get it cold and let a little water melt to see what, how that will change. Well, what I noticed uh, first on the nose is, is the spice notes seem elevated uh, by adding the ice. I'm going to say spice notes in the form of cinnamon. Um, you might feel some clove. You also might feel some, some uh, nutmeg or allspice as well. Um, I don't feel the vanilla quite as big here as I did there. But but the the uh, the nose feels creamier, more more caramel like than I was getting toffee on, on the knee. So anyway, I'm gonna take a drink. Being the ABV that it is, I wouldn't be afraid to add a little water to this. Not necessarily cold water, but uh, you know, uh, many many professional tastings will have you add water, uh, and, and sometimes it's in a in a you know I have a jigger pour. Sometimes it's you know just a little bit. I mean, maybe a if you got a bottle of water, maybe a capful, just enough, and, and that little bit of water will bring out the nose. It really will. And it will also bring out some flavors. That's just really up to your taste. I'm just saying at the proof this is, a little bit of water ain't going to hurt this thing. You would kill a man twice after eating a slice. Oh, that's just genius, man. So I get a lot of sugars up front, uh, and I'm not surprised by that. Uh, I get a, a lot of brown sugar, uh, uh, molasses is kind of you know very, like a very deep dark brown sugar. C 
certainly feel some fruit notes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say dark cherry. I feel like I'm getting some apricot in there, too. That could just be me, but that's kind of what I'm getting at the moment. Uh, the finish is, is a lot of oak and a lot of spice, man. Uh, those those uh, Cabernet barrels are probably providing a lot of those fruit notes, and, and, I, and I expect that to change as I get through this. But I do like the amount of spice in the finish. I suppose, you know, it's funny for, for well, I guess even now, um, traditionally a bourbon uses rye as a secondary green. Weeded bourbons have become very popular lately. Uh, but I got to admit, for me, I, I'm kind of going back to my roots. I, I really prefer uh, uh, a, a rye bourbon, I suppose. I'm trying to read this, but I can't get my, I don't have great lighting right where I'm at in the kitchen. And this gold, uh, gold lettering on, on this, uh, I don't know, cream or whatever color paper that is, isn't helping me, man. In 1919, we hit the Prohibition. God, I cannot read that, man. Just my lighting sucks right here, and I cannot read that. Well, I need new bifocals, mostly. It's not that important. Screw it. I was trying to give, give you the scoop, man, but it wasn't working for me. As a, a little more water melts in, I, I think right about now is, is what I refer to as the sweet spot. You get that right amount of water melting in there. It really brings all of the sugars to the surface. Now, earlier I mentioned uh, a brown sugar, a, a very dark brown sugar, molasses. Um, and as, as I let this sit just a little bit, It really sweetens that up. And, and I'm still getting that, that, that dark brown, molasses-like brown sugar, uh, but it's even more uh, more to the forefront than it was before. Before, we're just kind of, you know, sitting there in the middle, but now it's right to the surface. Uh, the, the notes uh, of cinnamon and spice and oak are still there in the finish. Uh, what's mainly different is the fruit notes that I'm picking up. I'm still getting a very dark cherry. I'm still feeling some apricot, uh, but you also get other, it's almost like a, a, a fruitcake candied fruit thing going on here. It's, it's, it's a very uh, easy to drink, very sippable bourbon, I will say. Uh, I will say, when Ed Grimley on you, I will say, uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, even at, at, you know, which is essentially cast strength here. All right, it's gorgeous, man. I didn't get a chance to visit the distillery when I was up there. We just ran out of time. There was, you know, uh, I wanted to hit a few places. My wife wanted to hit a few places. So we, we kind of, you know, split up the time. We each did a few things, and uh, it kind of worked out that way. But, uh, you know, uh, on a positive note, I suppose, I did save a few things for the next visit. And Jay Rager is definitely one place I'd, I'd like to visit next time. So there you go. Let me finish up this rocks. I'm going to do a, a separate video for Neat so it doesn't run too long. Happy Thanksgiving to y'all. I am Tom the Whiskey Whisperer, Whiskey Evangelist, Prolific Whiskey Drinker. <laughs> Sometimes I go with AM Radio Voice for no reason. Uh, Purveyor wisdom and all around good guy. Cheers, y'all.